टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट एक्सट्रैक्शन इन ऑर्थोडोटिक्स वाई डू वी नीड वाई डू वी नीड एक्सट्रैक्शन इन ऑर्थोनोटिक्स as we all know that most of the malar pollutions are a result of arch length and tooth size discrepancy i'm speaking about localized malar pollutions like crowding and spacings and proclination okay if you just forget about the effect of the position of the teeth on the dentofacial uh, on the facial structures or facial appearance when you look when you look into the uh, arch length and tooth size uh, uh, and a comparisons most of the crowdings or spacings are supposed to be a result of discrepancy between the arch material uh, sorry arch length and tooth material that's why in most of the cases of crowdings and proclination in order to uh, create space to correct this crowdings and proclination we need to have some teeth out of the arch that's why we need to go for a planned extraction of few teeth to obtain space to correct the malocclusion as we all know the uh, extraction in orthodontics might be either serial extractions or therapeutic extractions serial extractions are different and therapeutic extractions are different actually serial extraction is an interceptive procedure which we have discussed in detail in a interceptive orthodontics lecture in this lecture we will be mainly discussing the therapeutic extractions that is extractions which are done for the purpose of orthodontic treatment are called as therapeutic extractions so the serial extraction is an interceptive procedure whereas ther therapeutic extractions comes under corrective procedure okay now if we look into the history of orthodontics initially edward hartley angle who is supposed to be father of mo modern orthodontics used to expand the dental arches in order to obtain the space to correct the malar pollution so he was against extractions according to angle a jaw with a full complement of teeth gives a good occlusion and pleasing appearance but gradually when the cases treated by edward hadley angle were followed there were relapse tendencies in the cases treated by expansion so the expansion was contract uh, the expansion was contradicted the expansion treatment was contradicted by his own student calvin case who supported extraction treatment there onwards the therapeutic extractions came into orthodontics where we will go for extraction of few teeth in order to obtain the space for correction of malocclusion later on again expansion treatment prevailed and again the ex extraction treatment was reintroduced into the orthodontics by charles tweed by late 1940s let us discuss about the therapeutic extractions what is the need for extraction as i told you earlier we need extraction of few teeth to obtain space in the arch to correct the malocclusion like crowding and proclination or mal positioning of the teeth and also in order to correct molar relationship from class 2 to class 1 or class 3 to class 1 we need to go for extraction of few teeth selectively in the arch and suppose the our dental arches carries the teeth of abnormal size in order to accommodate them we need to have sufficient space in the dental arches for that we need to extract few teeth which are of least important or which are uh, best in providing the space for alignment of the teeth which are abnormally positioned or abnormally sized and shaped we need extraction in orthodontics and also to facilitate some kind of skeletal corrections by surgical treatment we need to go for some extractions in orthodontics so all these extractions which serve the purpose of treatment of a malocclusion are called as therapeutic extractions now which teeth to extract that is the choice of teeth to extract we have a teeth like incisors canines premolars and molars in the dental arches and in each group of teeth we have a, a two or a four teeth like two central two laterals two canines four premolars okay six molar so among all these teeth which teeth to extract for therapeutic purpose let us discuss about those things in detail if you first look into the first premolar extractions the first premolars are most common teeth to be extracted for 
orthodontic treatment. Why? Because the contact that, that will be subsequently obtained between the canine and second premolar is a good and satisfactory one. If you extract a first premolar for therapeutic purpose, we need to close the extraction space, isn't it? Now, once the extraction space is closed, the contact that is obtained between the second premolar and the canine will be a very good and a satisfactory one. This is one advantage or uh, one importance. And the second thing is, once we extract first premolar, in the posterior segment, we have second premolar, first molar and second molar. So, as we know that usually first premolars are extracted in cases where there is severe crowding and severe propagation, we need the extraction space to be closed by posterior movement of the anteriors for which we need a good anchorage in the posterior segment. So, extraction of first premolar helps us in attaining a good anchorage from more number of teeth in the posterior segment thereby the anterior teeth which are either crowded or severely proclined can be sufficiently brought into a normal alignment, alignment and well into the backward position by obtaining anchorage from more teeth that are present distal to the first premolar extraction space. So the indications of first premolar extractions are as I told you moderate to severe crowding and moderate to severe propagation. So when a patient has a moderate or severe crowding or moderate or severe propagation then we will sort to go for first premolar extractions. Okay. So this is a case where we can see a severe proclination and we have gone for first premolar extraction and subsequently the extraction space will be closed by posterior movement of the anteriors which will reduce the amount of proclination and its effect on the facial appearance. Now, sometimes we need to go for second premolar extractions also where like in mild anterior crowding and mild proclination cases, we will go for second premolar extractions. And in cases where the anterior anchorage has to be strengthened, we will not go for first premolar extraction, rather we will go for second premolar extraction so that the anterior segment carries six anterior teeth along with the two premolars. So that we have a good anchorage in the anterior segment which will allow us to easily mesalize the posterior segment as required in case of mild crowding and mild proclinations. And in, when the second premolars are grossly decayed, we will go for their extraction. Or if they are heavily filled and we need a space for reduction of the proclination and crowding, then rather than going for extraction of a healthier first premolar, we will go for extraction of an unhealthy second premolar. In cases where we need 4 to 5 mm of anchorage loss, again like in mild proclination or mild crowding cases, we will go for second premolar extractions. Even in some open bite cases, we will go for second premolar extraction so that we will measure the molar. As the molar comes front, there is a loss of wedging effect on the mandible and the mandibular plane will close leading to reduction of the open bite and obtaining a optimum bite. So these are a few indications where majorly we will go for second premolar extractions rather than first premolars. So, usually these are the two group, two teeth that is first premolars and second premolars are most commonly therapeutically extracted teeth in orthodontics. This is a case wherein they have gone for a second premolar extraction and the extracted space will be subsequently closed to a greater extent by mesial movement of the posteriors and to a lesser extent by decrowding in the anterior and mild proclination reduction of the anterior because here the anterior group of the teeth gives more strengthened anchorage because apart from canine to canine even first premolars also incorporated in the anchorage segment. I hope you know what is anchorage as we have discussed in our future classes of oh, sorry previous classes of anchorage. Now the next teeth that is that can be therapeutically extracted in orthodontics but most of the times it is not extracted only few times it is extracted this is first molar. Now usually we avoid extraction of first premolars because if we extract first premolar the space obtained might not, can't be effectively utilized for correction of crowdings which is present in the anterior segment because the extraction space is situated away from the anterior segment. So, 
we can't judiciously use the first molar extraction case number one number two is presence of first molar adds up to about 50 percent of masticatory force so extraction of first molars will reduce the efficiency of mastication of the person now the bite also gets deepened with extraction of the first molar so usually it will be helpful in uh, open bite cases okay so these are the disadvantages that are present with extraction of first permanent molar that's why we usually avoid extraction of first permanent molar yet there are some clinical situations which demand extraction of first permanent molars let us look into those situations so the indications for therapeutic extraction of first permanent molars is like when the permanent molars are grossly decayed or heavily filled then we can plan for their extraction and the space can be utilized for uh, orthodontic correction of malocclusions. Now in some open bite cases what happens is we can go for uh, the first molar extraction wherein uh, once we extract the first molar the mandible will get closed that means the mandibular plane will rotate in a anterior and forward direction leading to closure of the open bite but usually we will avoid first molar extractions and they are extracted only in cases where they are grossly decayed and their prognosis even after endodontic therapy is very poor now an interesting entity regarding the extraction of uh, first permanent molars is something called as wilkinson extraction this this says that we will extract all first permanent molars between the age of 8.5 to 9.5 years the concept is according to the wilkinson's extraction the concept underlying this is first permanent molars are said to be more prone for caries once the caries attacks first permanent molars then it can it can even spread to the other teeth so that is the that, that is the main principle behind wilkinson's extraction so as the first permanent molars are the teeth which are more prone for caries will go for extraction of first permanent molars by the age of 8.5 to 9.5 years that is after the eruption of the first and second premolar thereby the erupting second molar and the third molar will take the place of the first and second molars respectively this is called as wilkinson's extractions the benefits of wilkinson's extractions are the reduction of caries of the teeth as the Wilkinson's extraction philosophy claims that the first permanent molars are more uh, prone for caries. Extraction of these teeth will eliminate the risk of caries of other teeth. Even crowding that happens in the anterior region of the jaw can be reduced to some extent by extraction of the first permanent molar. And in the cases where we go for Wilkinson's extraction, there won't be any impaction of the third molar as they take the place of second molar and the second molar will take the place of first permanent molar so these are few benefits of wilkinson's extraction as we know that every procedure has its own advantages and disadvantages let us look into the drawbacks of wilkinson's extraction the first thing is the masticatory efficiency is reduced as i told you earlier uh, the first permanent molar presence will uh, add to about 50 percent of masticatory efficiency once the first permanent molars are extracted for therapeutic purpose, then the masticatory efficiency is reduced. And as we discussed earlier, the space is present somewhere behind the premolar, that is away from the anterior region. So, if at all we have any crowdings in the anterior region or percolation of the anterior teeth, the space that is present, uh, that is obtained after extraction of first permanent molar is no way useful for reduction or alleviation of Crowdings and proclination. And moreover, if we want to go for orthodontic treatment in near future after extraction of first permanent molars, we won't have a sufficient anchorage because first permanent molar is supposed to give a good anchorage because of its three large roots and large root surface area when compared to the second permanent molars. So the teeth which acts as a major source of anchorage will be lost if we are intending to go for a orthodontic treatment in the near future after extraction of first permanent molars. One more thing is, once we have a extraction space of the first permanent molar, 
the second premolar drifts distally into the extraction space and the second permanent molar will drift mesially into the extraction space thereby the occlusion of the patient will be disturbed so these are the different advantages and disadvantages of uh, first permanent molar extraction but whether it be a first permanent molar or premolar or uh, first premolar or second premolar whatever it is once you have decided to extract a particular tooth for therapeutic purpose you should have a strong uh, you know strong background or strong support you should you should support yourself that this extraction is doing good and this does not do any bad so you have to outweigh the benefits merits and demerits of the extraction of a specific tooth before you institute a, a therapeutic extraction procedure or else you are at risk you will be doing harm to the patient so right decision is very much important because once a tooth is extracted and out of the socket once lost is lost we can't regain it back so think before extraction the next tooth that can be extracted therapeutically is second molar second permanent molar usually extraction of second permanent molar will prevent impaction of the third molars number one number two in cases where we need to dislodge the first permanent molar like in crowding in the uh, crowding in the region of the premolar or uh, no sufficient space for eruption of the canine that means mild space requirement cases particularly in the region of premolar and canine require dislodization of the first permanent molar in such cases we will go for second molar extractions even in order to close the open bites we can go for second molar extractions as i told you extraction of second molars will cause open, uh, closing of the mandibular plane leading to reduction in the open bite okay now even in some cases where we need to eliminate the lower anterior crowding we will go for second molar extraction but most but most commonly we go for second molar extraction only in cases where we need to dislodge the first permanent molar and in cases where we have a open bite and in order to, in order to close the bite we will go for second permanent molar extraction the third molar extractions as we usually know the impacted third molars are removed and in orthodontics third molars are supposed to be associated with late mandibular anterior crowding and to eliminate this late mandibular anterior crowding we will go for third molar extractions and in some cases where the third molars are malformed and they are interfering with occlusion like buccally erupted third molars we will go for extraction in some cases once we extract the first pre first premolar for orthodontic purpose say uh, sometimes what happens is this uh, extraction space will be likely to be closed due to the mesial movement of the posteriors and the force of this mesial movement of the posteriors is supposed to be due to pushing uh, that is uh, pushing force of the third molar on the posterior teeth which will tend to uh, occupy the first premolar extraction space which is usually uh, important to retain it for Uh, alleviating the crowding and reduction of pronation so third molar has a tendency to push the posterior teeth into the extraction space thereby to prevent any encroachment of the extraction space by mesial movement of the posteriors in case of first premolar extractions we will go for extraction of the sec, uh, third molar now mandibular incisor extractions usually as much as possible we should avoid the mandibular incisor extraction why because once we extract the mandibular anteriors there will be collapse of the mandibular anterior segment once we extract mandibular incisor there will be collapse of mandibular anterior segment leading to narrowing or decreasing in the intercanine width as a result there will be compensatory reduction of the intercanine width in the upper arch leading to occurrence of the crowding okay so most of the times avoid a mandibular incisor extraction but in some cases like bolton's tooth material excess which amounts to bolton's anterior tooth material excess which amounts to a width of the uh, which amounts to a width of a mandibular incisor then the incisor which has a most poor prognosis will be extracted in order to relieve the crowding in the lower anterior region okay usually we should avoid mandibular incisor extraction in order to go for mandibular incisor extraction a patient should have a good profile without much proclination only maximum 
uh, or severe lower anterior crowding for which the space required is not more than width of a mandibular incisor. In such cases, you can go for a mandibular incisor extraction and the incisor that is supposed to be extracted should be completely out of the arch or the incisor might have been a traumatized incisor or with a severe gingival recession and severe periodontal involvement wherein its uh, prognosis and its preservation or its uh, uh, you know its maintenance is difficult such teeth should be extracted and in some cases we can see man blood incisors in the form flaring in the form of a fan shape so it is very difficult to decrowd these uh, this type of uh, incisors arrangement in the mandibular arch wherein we will go for extraction of a single incisor to correct the axial inclination of the mandibular anteriors. And in cases of mild class 3 with lower incisor crowding, we will go for extraction of a uh, mandibular incisor and we will relieve the crowding. Okay? Usually, we will avoid the mandibular incisor extraction because it causes uh, collapse of the lower arch and a compensatory collapse of the maxillary arch and midline shift but in some cases wherein there is severe crowding of the lower anteriors and for which to relieve the crowding we need a space whose uh, we need to relieve the crowding and the space requirement is not more than the width of the incisor then we will extract mandibular incisor now which mandibular incisor the incisor which is having a poor prognosis which is severely traumatized or which is severely out of the arch or which has a severe periodontal destruction and a very poor prognosis that teeth will be extracted for orthodontic purpose okay now coming to the maxillary incisor extractions we will never extract mandibular incisors for orthodontic purpose usually the sorry we will never extract maxillary incisors for orthodontic purpose even if we extract this in a very rare situation and when the maxillary incisor is unfavorably impacted which is severely blocked out of the arch grossly decayed traumatized or malformed and when in cases where there is a unilateral uh, uh, missing of the lateral incisor we will go for a extraction of the maxillary incisor okay like maxillary lateral incisor we will extract on the other side also and then we will go for its uh, replacement bilaterally or in cases where the maxillary incisor has severely dilacerated tooth then we will go for its extraction now canine extraction canine extractions in orthodontics are rarely indicated their extraction causes flattening of the face and the facial appearance will be altered and it gives a lot of changes to the facial expressions canine is supposed to be a corner uh, you know corner tooth of occlusion corner tooth of occlusion okay its extraction causes flattening of the facial flattening of the face alteration in the facial expression and the contact between the lateral incisor and the first premolar is unsatisfactory leading to periodontal problems so most of the times we will uh, not go for extraction of the canines until unless and until they are severely impacted or grossly decayed or malformed traumatized okay in class 3 cases premature shedding of maxillary canines indicates extraction of its counterpart so in very rare cases only we will go for extraction of canines either in the maxillary arch or mandibular arch in most common situations wherein we go for canine extractions are severely impacted canines if you look into the image the canine the mandibular canine is almost in the region of symphysis such canine can't be brought into the occlusion and it has to be undergone trans alveolar extraction so that the roots of adjacent teeth will not be damaged and when you look into the intraoral periapical radiograph in the image you can see the canines almost uh, the tips of the canines are uh, in relation to the apices of the incisors so such teeth have a poor prognosis they can't be brought into occlusion and they have to go for extraction. So that was about uh, uh, the extraction of different teeth for therapeutic purpose, their indications, contraindications, merits and demerits. Now, let us discuss about driftodontics. 
What is diphtheromatics? As we usually know that under the influence of masticatory forces, all the posterior teeth tend to drift mesially. So when we have a particular tooth in the posterior segment out of the arch or extracted, then the space that is created by the extraction of that particular tooth will be always having a tendency to be closed by mesial movement of the teeth that are present distal to it. This is called as diphtodontic. So we can utilize the concept of diphtodontics in some cases like uh, after extraction spaces are closed completely, if minimal spaces are left over distal to the uh, say distal to the canine or distal to the first, pre first premolar in case of all face extraction then the molar can be allowed to drift mesially under the influence of masticatory forces. This is called as diphtodontics. Now, just we need to know about few terminologies like balancing extractions. What do you mean by balancing extractions? For example, if I have a case of severe crowding, okay, and I am going to extract first premolar on right side and leaving the first premolar on the left side intact or not extracting the first premolar on the left side, what happens? Of course, I will relieve the crowding efficiently, but I will land up in midline shift towards the right side which is not supposed to be happened. That is why in order to balance the right and the left side, we need to go for extraction of the tooth of the same tooth or the similar tooth on the opposite side. This is called as balancing extraction. So balancing extraction is nothing but extraction of another tooth on the opposite side of the same arch. Okay. What is compensating extractions? Now, suppose a patient has a class one molar relationship and I am extracting uh, say upper first premolars only okay upper first premolars only and I am not extracting the lower first molars then what's happening is there is a tendency of change in the canine relationship and molar relationship okay so in order to maintain a class 1 molar relationship and class 1 canine relationship then we need to go for extraction of some teeth in the opposite arch also to compensate the extractions in the upper arch thereby the occlusion will not be disturbed this is called as compensating extractions so compensating extractions are extractions that are done in the opposite jaw in order to compensate the extractions in one jaw okay so balancing extractions are extractions done in the same jaw on the opposite side whereas Composite uh, so compensating extractions are the extractions done in the opposite jaw to compensate the extractions in its counterpart. Okay, so that was our discussion about extractions in orthodontics. Hope it's clear. So the main thing you have to remember or keep in mind is once teeth is extracted, it is extracted. It's difficult to replace it. Of course, we can go for a processes, but it is difficult to uh, replace the natural tooth that is extracted. So, before you plan extractions, think about merits and demerits twice and then go ahead with a proper extraction with a sound diagnosis. Hope you all understood.